Hey guys, I'm Thomas and this is your very first piano lesson. This lesson is for you if you never sit on a piano before and finally want to make your dream come true to learn this beautiful instrument. And at the end of this lesson you will be able to learn three easy and beautiful piano songs. Before we get started, I created an ebook for you guys. There you can find all the information I have in this lesson here, but even much more. It's really a full comprehensive ebook. And probably if you go on Amazon and have a look for a book like this, you need to pay 30, 40, even 50 bucks. You can get this ebook for free. Click the link in the description and enjoy your first piano lesson. Okay, first let's talk about the piano itself. My piano here has 88 keys, yeah, and this is a full-size piano. Well, you can't see all the 88 keys right now, and that's fine, because um, many piano, or maybe you have a keyboard, that's also totally fine as well, have a smaller keyboard. So sometimes they have 64 keys, some, sometimes they have 72 keys, but no matter if you have a full-size acoustic piano with 88 keys or a smaller one or a keyboard, you can apply everything I teach in this lesson with your instrument. Okay, now let's talk about the piano key names and that maybe will surprise you because the piano key names are the same as the alphabet, as the letters we have. We have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, but we stop at the G because after the G we repeat the same. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And so on, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So it's really like the beginning of the alphabet, it's just letters. But how do you know which letter is assigned to which key? And this brings us to part number three how to find any note on the piano. And here's a trick, because this is the part where the black keys come into the game the first time. Because as you can see, we have all the groups of black keys. We have the couple, the two black keys, then we have three black keys, two black keys, three black keys, and so on. All over the piano, all over the keyboard, no matter <laughs> which size you have, it's always the same, right? And that makes us find the notes on the piano because what we are picking now is one group of three black keys we take the middle one and then go to the right to the white key on the right and this is the a and now you can count a b c d e f g and you can find all the notes on the white keys. We come later again, um, back again to the black keys. Yeah, but now you know how to find all this and try this together with me again, please. Find another part of three notes. Black notes, uh, three black keys, sorry. Take the middle one, go to the right. And which one is it? The A, correct. This is A. So, and then we count together. You can do this with a pointer first. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then you can go on. A, B, C, D. Yeah, okay. The, I go very high, but you can also start here. Yeah, no matter where you start, it's always the same. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So as you can see, it's not too hard to find the notes, but maybe you say, hey Thomas, but this takes a long time. Do I always have to count and to find this? And so we'll take the, the three black notes, go to the middle one, then to the right. And for example, so when I wanted to play an E, do I always have to do this whole process? Like A, B, C, D, E, R. Find the E, yeah. So uh, that makes it very, very long to play a song. Yeah, you're right at this point. But the good news is, you will be surprised how fast this will go in the next days, in the next weeks. Of course, the longer you play, the longer you practice, the faster it goes, and then it will go super fast, like that. You know, this is an E, this is an F, this is an B, G, D, B, A, C, and so on you will be super fast and not only with one finger, you will be also able to play um, G, C, F, D, C, G sharp. Oh, what about the black keys? 
this is what we are talking about next. But again, you will be surprised how fast you will be able to make progress when you continue practicing. And I have a lot of lessons that will guide you through all this process. So again, check the link in the description box below for my free email training. This is my blueprint where you get the lessons step by step, very easy to follow with the exercises you need to make this great progress. And by the way, it's so much fun as well. Okay, next part. So what about the black keys? Before we talk about the black keys, we have to know that every note has a sharp and has a flat. So when I go to the A, so three black keys, the middle one, I go to the right, this is the A. When I go to the A, we have a flat, and this is the one on the left, and here's a very important rule. Let's go with the finger deeper into the key, where I'm between the black keys, because here, the next on the left is the, is the white key. We need to go deeper with the finger in the piano, so in the key. So on the left side now we have a black key and this is the flat. This is called A flat. Okay, let's go back to the A. When I go to the right, I have the A sharp. So, and this is where um, how we discover the name of the black keys. So I go to the A, to the left is the A flat back to the A, to the right is the A sharp. Let's try another note, let's try the D, so when this is A, B, C, D. Okay, let's go deep into the piano. So on the left, the next note on the left, this is the D flat, go back to the D, the next to the right, which one is this? D sharp, correct, perfect. So this is how we can get to know the names of the black keys, but maybe you say, hey, but Thomas, what about with the G? I go deeper into the piano, I go to the right. Isn't this G sharp? Yes, correct, this is G sharp. But then you say, but Thomas, before you said that this key is A flat, because when I go to the A to the left, this is the same key, this A flat. And you're right. This, this key has two names. Well, at least two names. In a very advanced piano theory or music theory, this has even more names. The rule here is each key on the piano can have multiple names. Yeah, so when I go to the G, to the right, this is a G sharp. When I go to the A, to the left, this is an A flat. And it depends on a complex context of music theory. I have lessons for this as well, where I explain this uh, step by step and in detail. Yeah, but it's a very complex topic and um, it depends on the topic if we call the, this key A flat or G sharp. But for now, it's totally fine that you understand that a note can have multiple names. And when I say, um, say hey, okay, the um, we play the A flat now, that you know that we play this one. Okay, and this is how you can find all the notes on your piano. Okay, the last example, when we go to the B, we go to the left and this is a B flat. Correct. And we go to back to the B. So which one is the B sharp? This one. Correct. So this key is the B sharp and also the C, but in 99% of the cases, in 99.999% of the cases, we call this key a C, yeah? So each key has multiple names. Maybe it sounds a bit confusing right now, but you will see very soon that it's much easier than it seems to be. Okay, let's talk about whole tone steps and half tone steps. I already shared a secret that I go deep into the piano with my finger so that I can meet really the next note when I go to the right. So, and uh, the next key. So really when I go to the right here, the next key is the black one. 
And this is what is called a half tone step, or maybe you can also call it half step or semitone step. So this is a half tone step. This one is the next half one step to the right. This one again, this one again, and this one again. Also, we play one white and then again a white key. Yeah, because in most cases, the half tone step is the next black, then again the next white, the next black, then again the next white, the next black, then again the next white key. But here, because we don't have a black key between, it's again the next white key. Okay, so these are half steps, half tone steps or semitone steps. Very important to know because a lot of music theory is based on these half tone steps or semitone steps. So let's talk about the whole tone step or the whole step. And a whole step is always two half steps. So when I go here, one half and the next half, so we are on this key, and the whole step is this one. From C to D is a whole step. So we can always count two. So let's go on here. One, two, this is the next whole step. Let's um, have a look here. One and two, yes. And now we go from the, a white key to a black key, and this is also a whole tone step. Yeah. So the rule is pretty easy. Also here, a semitone step is always the next key on the right, or of course on the left. And a whole tone step are two semitone steps. We are nearly ready to play something, but first let's talk about finger numbers. But this is very easy as well, because we get, give each finger a number and we start with the number one and these are our thumbs. No matter if it's on your right hand or the left hand, the thumb has number one, then we count two, three, four, and pinky is five. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. So why do we need the finger numbers? It's mainly for communication purpose. For example, when I play something like this, and I wanna teach you this, um, then I can say in the right hand, play number two, five, one. Yeah, that means the, the finger two, the finger five, and the finger number one. So one, two, three, four, five. We also use this finger numbers when we practicing music with sheets. And as you can see on the sheets, there are small numbers about the notes and these are the finger numbers as well, so that we know which finger we should use to play this note. And this is also very important because we have so many keys on the piano, even if you have just a small uh, keyboard, we have much more keys than finger available. So we very often have to reposition our whole hand, our fingers. For example, when I play a scale like this, you can see that here I use the thumb, my first finger here, I play the notes and then suddenly my thumb has to play this F so that I have enough fingers to play here especially these three notes yeah because if I don't reposition my hand I, I just can only play in this area here yeah but I want to play much more notes and not only this eight notes but twice as much and maybe also some chords yeah, so this is very important that we talk about these finger numbers great and now we are ready to play something. And the first step before we play something is that we position the hand on the piano, on the keyboard. And the way you should do this is imagine you have an apple yeah, in your hand or maybe a tennis ball or something like that. So um, that you hold it like this. Yeah, not, not like this and not like this, but like, like the apple, like that the ball yeah it's a full it's a really huge apple yeah well depending on your hand size okay <laughs> but you have this perfect apple in your hand and that this way you um place the hand on the piano so that the thumb is on the c three black keys the middle one go to the right a b c okay so this is where we place our thumb, the first finger, one, and the other one, two, three, four, five, 
right, right side by side. So another important tip for the finger, for the finger position, is that we play the notes here with the fingertips, okay? Not with, uh, with your nail. <laughs> Yeah, and and not what um, many girls love to do, uh, <laughs> that have uh, long <laughs> long nails. Um, so, uh, by the way, many many piano players have short nails. So not all of them, and you don't have, but it can help. <laughs> so, but please pay attention that you place your ha don't place your hand too flat and not the opposite, not, not like this and not like this. It should be with the fingertips, yeah? Really the top of the finger should place the hand. If you have long nails, try to adjust it. You, you need to find the position, but don't do this one. So this can happen at the very beginning, um, that your finger looks like this on the piano. Um, and a lot of piano students are doing this, but this is something you should try to avoid because it steals a lot of energy while playing a note. Okay, now that you placed your hand on the piano, let's play the first note with the first finger, the C. Skip the next one. We don't play the D, we play the next one. This is the E with the third finger, with the middle finger. The next one we skip it, this is the F. And then the next one is the G. And we play all notes together. And this is a challenge. This is the first challenge. But here are some tricks for this challenge. Because the challenge is to play all notes really together and in the same volume. So not like this. And not like this. And not like. And not there. Yeah, it should be really clean. This is a very, very important part because what's very important for me well, with all my teaching lessons is that you make really nice music. For example, you can, of course, you can play this song like... Yeah, these are maybe the right notes, but it doesn't sound nice. It, it doesn't sound like this. Yeah. And this is the reason why I say it's very important that you, f from the beginning on, that you try to play it really nice and clean, all notes together, and all at the same, with the same volume, yeah? And this can be a challenge. For example, the pinky can, can, go, can go like this, and, and it's um, very hard to control, and maybe the thumb is much too loud, and then, yeah? So, but... What you should do now is repeat this a hundred times. Yeah, maybe 50 times, maybe maybe 30 times, but at least 30 times that you play just this C chord. Take your time and just play this C chord again. And when I say 100 times, no worries, that doesn't take too long. Because it's getting easier and faster and faster and by the way practicing is nothing else than repeating something again and again and try to make it better from time to time so and if you don't make it perfect at the very beginning that's totally fine that's that's normal yeah i started with with the pinky like here and and my uh, a ring finger was here and the, the this one uh, was like this and uh, then I didn't know how to play this hey that's how it starts yeah and repetition of of some exercise is the key to success yeah take your time I am so sure um, that you will make it to play the chord very very nice all notes together all at the same volume Okay, now that you know how to play a C chord, I want to show you how you can play every chord on the piano, every major and every minor chord. And this is the first time where the half tone steps, the semitone steps come back into the game because we can choose any key on the piano. So let's say we take the A, three notes, the middle one, go to the right. 
So, and now we want to play an A major chord. Because we can, from each note, we have a major chord and a minor chord. And the main difference is the sound of the chord. Yeah? So let's start with a major chord. And from the major chord, we start by counting one, two, three, four half tone steps. And then one, two, three. So, and this is an A major chord. And if you want to, um, you can practice this chord now as well by repeating it and try that you play it very nice and clean. Um, but I also want to show you how you can find a minor chord. And here it's exactly the opposite because we start, well, we start the same, A, but now we start with three half tone steps, one, two, three, and then four, one, two, three, four. And this is an A minor chord. And as you can hear, the character of this minor chord is different than the major chord. The major chord is awakened, it's happy, it's dominant. And the minor chord is kind of sad, thoughtful, it has another character. Yeah, maybe you can find your own words. Let me know in the comments below how would you describe a minor chord, the sound of a minor chord. I play my, an advanced version of it. But how would you describe this atmosphere? How would you describe the atmosphere of a major chord? Yeah, it's different. But it's always, no, no, it's not always the same, but it's the same from each key. So let's say, and now it's your turn, let's say we pick a D. So, how do we play a major chord from a D? Which one is it? Try to find it now. Okay, here's the, I help you, one, two, three, four. You're with the major chord, first the four, and then three, one, two, three. So this is a D major chord. So now the minor chord, you can pause the video if you wanna try to find it first by yourself. So we start with the D, one, two, three, first three semitone steps, half tone steps, and then one, two, three, four. Okay, so with a semitone, uh, with a minor chord, we have three semitone steps and then four. And with the major chord, we have four semitone steps and then three. Okay, super easy to remember, right? And here's another trick. When you know how to play a major chord, you can just take the middle one and go one half tone step to the left and you have the minor chord. And when you know the minor chord, you can do exactly the opposite and go the one semitone step to the right. And then we have the major chord. So what is a chord? A chord is a combination of three notes or more. Yeah, this is a chord, this is a chord, this is a chord, these are four notes, Again, for this is a chord as well. So we have different kinds of chord, but the main difference between chords is that we have major and minor chords. These are the two chord types we have, major and minor. And all the other chords are just variations of these two chord types. And the difference of these chord types is how they sound, yeah? How a major chord sounds and how a minor chord sounds. The main character, because there's a huge difference in the main character between these two chord types. Let me share another trick about chords with you, because chords are so important. Chords are the basic of all music. Well, of all music with melodies. For example, when we play a song like This, if you if, believe it or not, this is based on chords. And this is based on an A minor chord and on a G, an E major chord. A minor and E, 
uh, major. And let me show you what you can make with when, when you know that this is based on chords. It's much easier um, to remember this, this piece here uh, for Elise by Beethoven. It's much faster to learn this piece and it's great to understand how this piece is made because this you can I'm only able to play it like this because I understand the cause behind this. And this is why chords are so important. All the music is really based on chords. And if you understand the theory behind this, playing the piano is 10 times, maybe 100 times much more fun. The good news, I have a lot of videos where I talk about all these topics or very easy step-by-step -step guides and you find them in my email, in my free email training. I link this in the description below. Okay, but maybe you ask, okay, hey Thomas, um, you when you played this this whole thing with Für Elisa, you played much more than a chord. But the answer is no, I didn't play more because the A minor chord, so let's go to the A, one, two, three, semitone steps, one, two, three, four, so this is the A minor chord. The A minor chord is not only here, because we already know that we have the scale A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then we start with the A again, and that means I can play this A here again, I can play this C here again, I can play this E here again, and so on. Yeah, I make this fast because you don't have to do this now. But now I have two A minor chords. Unfortunately, I don't have that much fingers that I can play more, but in theory, I can play all the A, C and E's on my piano. <laughs> and then I have this A minor chord. Um, but, and here's the next step for this lesson, I use my pedal. Well, right now I have a super, super easy and cheap pedal for like seven bucks or so um, on my e-piano. Um, maybe you have a pedal on your real acoustic piano, which is attached to your piano, um, which is gold and, and much bigger. And maybe you have even three pedals. And then um, the main one is the one on the right. Um, maybe you don't have a pedal and in this case I highly recommend to get one, yeah? You can get one on Amazon, um, and Guitar Center, and Music Store, um, just search for pedal or sustain pedal um, because this is a very important piece. Every piano player use it, uses it and what this does is when I play the A and when I leave the key, the note stops playing, right? But when I use when I press the pedal now now with my finger, but of course usually I use it with my foot. I press it. I play the A. I leave the um, the finger, but the sound keeps playing until I leave it. Okay. So, and this pedal allows me when I put it back on the floor to play an A, C, E. And the notes keep sounding and I play A, C, E, A, C, E, A, C, E, A, and this is all my A minor chord. You can make great things with chords. There's so much to discover. First, let's talk about the four main important chords and you can play so many songs just with these four chords. And this is also what we're gonna do. You can do this immediately. Just click on the video right here and this is your second piano lesson. This is where all the fun starts. We start immediately playing beautiful songs, beautiful piano pieces. So if you haven't yet, get your free email training. Thank you so much that you're here. I can't wait to see you in the next lesson. So click here and see you there.